In this video, you're gonna learn how to turn your boring normal water into this. That's coming right up. Stay tuned. What's up, Survivalists? It's Che from Team WNJ here. If you're not subscribed already, what are you waiting for? Subscribe now and hit that bell icon to stay notified when I upload new videos like these on Monday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Now, before we begin, let's try to get this video up to five likes. Also, this video is meant for rivers and lakes. If you're trying to make oceans or water simulations, those are two different techniques. Now, let's get right into it. Before you is the scene that I've set up for this tutorial. The bottom view panel is exactly what we'll be rendering as the camera that we'll be using. I've already set up the lighting and the environment and everything else, so by default the render looks like this. This is when the water only has a diffuse and an alpha channel, which is what Mindways usually gives you. But we want our water to look like this. So how do we do that? Step one, let's click on our water in our main viewport, just click on him, and scroll down on our textures window. We should find a texture that is highlighted like so. You see a little orange highlight around it. Do not create your own material for this. Find the existing material. If you create your own materials, that's just gonna cause problems and it'll take more time. So after you find the material, double click it and it should bring up the material editor. The first problem I have with this water is that it's way too transparent. And what controls this is the alpha channel. So I'm simply going to disable the alpha channel. What that should leave you with is a solid block of blue water. Now that doesn't look like water whatsoever, but that's okay because let's introduce the fog channel. Once you enable it, you shouldn't see any difference in your viewport, but if you look at the material, it's actually faded out on the outside. Now I've already pre-made a dark blue texture right here and I haven't changed any of the brightness or distance settings. Now we've got that nice depth fog that we're looking for, but it still looks very neon glowy blue and I don't want that. It's time to say goodbye to the diffuse channel by turning off color. Don't worry, we're not leaving it as ink. Let's go over to our transparency channel and enable that. The only thing we need to do in the transparency is change the refraction preset from custom to water. Everything else can be left at default. Now, we don't need reflectance, but let's go into reflectance anyway, check it, and you should find a default specular here. Delete that and just leave it as transparency. You can feel free to also disable the reflectance afterwards. That doesn't affect the render. Now we hit render, we get something that looks a lot more like water, but still not quite. It's way too still right now. There's no motion or movement. So let's try to fix that. Instead of using displacement, we're going to be using the bump channel just to save render time. So let's enable bump. Now in our bump channel, under this texture area, hit this little triangle and select noise. Now noise is just a random black and white image like this. What the bump channel does is it takes a look at which parts are white and raises them. It takes a look at which parts are dark and pushes them down. This gives the illusion that the object is 3D and bumpy. In the bump channel, click on the thumbnail of the noise and this will bring you into the noise settings. The default noise doesn't work very well for water. So let's click this drop down here on the noise and let's select something else. I personally like turbulence. If we render this now, it instantly looks a lot better, but we can still tweak it a little bit more. I want a bit more wrinkles in my water, so I'm going to change the global scale down from 100 to 10. But when we render now, it looks like there's way too many bumps in the water. Click on the bump settings and change the strength from 20 to 5. I find that number works for me in this situation, but it may be different for you. I still think it's quite a bit too bumpy, so I'm going to up the global scale up to 35, say. This is all trial and error to find the right water for your needs. Alright, so I'm happy with that, and if you're rendering a still image, you should be too. But this channel teaches animation, so let's animate the water. When we take a look at this river, it flows over into this big open space. So theoretically, the water should be going down and to the right. In the material editor, you're gonna notice a tab here under the noise settings for movement. The first one is X, as in the red axis, and the last one is Z, the blue axis. Ignore the middle one, that's going to scale up the size of your texture, you don't want that to happen. Because the red arrow is pointing upwards and we want our water to move down, let's set our X movement to negative 10. This is going to move at negative 10 centimeters. I want the same thing with a Z axis, but I want it to move a bit faster, let's do negative 15. As for the speed, I found that 20 works relatively well, but it's up to you. This still won't animate yet until you put in animation speed. This doesn't tell you the units, but it works in seconds. So I'm gonna say move every one second. The loop period works the exact same way. If you want your animation to loop, simply type in the number of seconds your animation goes for, and I'll loop for those amount of seconds. So there you have it. That's how I make my rivers for Levislear. Speaking of Levislear, if you haven't watched it already, here's your chance to watch it right now because this thing that aired at PAX Australia 2018 is going to take over by storm. Today's video was requested by Dark Gamer, so if you'd like to request your own tutorials, leave them in the comments below or contact me directly through Discord, link in the description down below. If you'd like something even more from me, feel free to check out our Patreon and find a tier that's right for you. 
We're currently offering one-on-one -on -one conversations with me, as well as early access to new episodes of Level Slayer and exclusive behind-the-scenes footage. So if you'd like a piece of that, go check out our Patreon. Cheers!